Okay, in this video, we're going to look at solving some different types of problems involving parallel lines. So let's take a look at our first example here. I've got two parallel lines cut by a transversal, and I'm told the measure of this angle is 3x, the measure of this angle is 93. Well, one of the first things I notice is that this is a pair of alternate interior angles. And I remember that I have an alternate interior angle theorem, which tells me if two parallel lines are cut by a transversal, alternate interior angles are congruent. So I can set these two values equal to each other, 3x equals 93. And then I can solve this for x. Divide both sides by 3, and I get x equals 31. So all I needed was my alternate interior angles theorem. Example number two, I have these two values given to me, and I notice that the values that these two angles are same side interior angles. Well, I remember the same side interior angles theorem says that if two parallel lines are cut by a transversal, then same side interior angles are supplementary. So I just take both of these angles. Since they're supplementary, that means their sum must be 180. So I add these two values together, set it equal to 180, and I have an equation that I can solve. Subtract 42 from both sides, and I get 6y equals 138, and I divide both sides by 6, and I get y equals 223. All right, now let's take a look at example number three. Here I have a problem where I'm trying to solve for not just one value, but two values. I want to solve for x and y. And so we're going to introduce the first of our problem-solving tips. And problem-solving tip number one just says one step at a time. In other words, don't try to solve for x and y all in one step. Just solve for one of them and then solve for the other one. So which one am I going to do first? Well, let's see. I notice that these two angles here form a linear pair, which means I could take this value and add it to this value and set that equal to 180. The problem with that is, if I do that, I'm going to have uh, an x term and I'm going to have a y term. I'm going to be trying to solve for x and y in just one equation, and I'm not going to be able to do that. So how about if I look at this value and this value? They both contain y. These are same side interior angles. I know from my same side interior angle theorem that if two parallel lines, and these two lines here are parallel, if two parallel lines are cut by a transversal, same side interior angles are supplementary. So I can add these two angles together and set them equal to 180. Now I've got an equation. I want to solve it for y. Collect like terms here. That gives me 19y minus 10. 19y minus 10. I'll add 10 to both sides. That gives me 19y equals 190. And now I divide both sides by 19. And that gives me y equals 10. Well, now that I know that y equals 10, I can plug that value in for this angle here. And since y equals 10, 6 times 10 is 60. So now I know this angle must be 60 degrees. Now I can use the fact that these two angles form a linear pair. And I can add them together. 9x plus 12 plus 60 must be equal to 180. So 9x plus 12, this angle, plus this angle, which I know now is 60 degrees, must be equal to 180, since these two angles form a linear pair. Now, once again, I want to collect like terms. 9x plus 72 equals 180. Subtract 72 from both sides. That gives me 9x equals 108. And if I divide both sides by 9, then I get x equals 12. Okay, now for example number four, I have a slightly more complicated picture. I have not one, but two sets of parallel lines. And I have 
not just one, not just two, but I've got three different values, x, y, and z, that I'm trying to solve for. So for this one, we're going to be using the second of our problem-solving tips. And it's similar to the one step at a time one. Problem-solving tip number two is cover up what you don't need. Okay, so now using problem solving tip number one, I know I only want to solve for one of my variables at a time, and so I'm going to cover up every part of the picture that I'm not going to be using. So I look at my picture, and I happen to notice I've got a 98 degree angle right here, and I've got a value for 14z right here. I think I'm going to start with my value for z because I notice if I cover up this half of the picture, well, then now I've just got two parallel lines cut by a transversal, and these two angles are alternate interior angles. So I know from my alternate interior angle theorem that if two parallel lines are cut by a transversal, alternate interior angles are congruent. So I can just set those values equal to each other. 98 equals 14z, and I can solve for z. 98 divided by 14, and z equals... Uh, what's that? Five, six, seven, seven times eight, seven, eight, nine, seven. So z equals seven. Now, once I know the value of z, once again, I can plug that in here. Actually, even without plugging it in, I know that this angle is going to be 98. z is seven. Seven times 14 is 98. So I know this angle is 98 degrees. Now, I can solve for this value here. And once again, I'm going to cover up what I don't need. Let me cover up this bottom part here. Now I can see I have these two parallel lines cut by this transversal. These two lines, or these two angles, are same side interior angles. And I know from my theorem that if two parallel lines are cut by a transversal, same side interior angles are supplementary. So again, I can set up an equation with these two angles. So 98 plus 2x plus 6 equals 180. So let's see, collect like terms here. It's going to give me 2x plus 14, 104 equals 180. Subtract 104 from both sides. 2x equals, let's see, 6, 76. Divide both sides by 2, and I get x equals, let's see, 76 divided by 2, 38. All right, so now I have x and I have z. Only thing I need now is to find y. So let's see. There's a few different ways that I could go about doing this. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to see if it helps to cover up this top part here. Now, these two angles here, I notice I've got two parallel lines cut by a transversal, and these two angles are alternate exterior angles. And I have a theorem that tells me that if two parallel lines are cut by a transversal, alternate exterior angles are congruent. So once again, I can say 98, since these two angles are congruent, 98 is equal to... 3y plus 8, and I can solve this equation for y. Subtract 8 from both sides. 90 equals 3y. Divide both sides by 3, and I get y equals 90 divided by 3, which is 30. So by covering up what I didn't need, I was able to solve each of these three equations for the different variables x, y, and z. So example number five. Now, here we have two parallel lines, but they're kind of in an odd looking form. This is the shape of a triangle with two parallel lines inside it. I haven't seen that before. Here I'm going to make use of a problem solving tip. And my problem solving tip number three that I'm going to use is redraw the picture. 
In particular, it turns out that the fact that this is a triangle, that doesn't really have very much to do with the problem. What I'm really interested in is the fact that I've got these two parallel lines, and I've got these angles, and I'd like to figure out what's the relationship between these angles. So if I just redraw the picture using these two parallel lines, and this side of the triangle, well now I've got this angle here is 4x minus 5. This angle down here is 3x plus 11. And now I'm making use of my problem solving tip number one where I'm just going to do one step at a time. I'm just going to solve for x using these two angles. I'm not even going to write the value for that angle in. So since these two angles I can see are corresponding angles, since I know for parallel lines cut by transversal corresponding angles are congruent, then I can set these two values equal to each other. 4x minus 5 equals 3x plus 11. And now I can solve for x. Subtract 3x from both sides. Add 5 to both sides. And that gives me x equals 16. So now I have my value for x. And let's see. Why don't I go ahead and plug... Let me go ahead and plug x in here, and I can solve for this angle, 4 times 16 minus 5, so that's going to be 64 minus 5, which is 59. So now I know this angle is 59, this angle is 3y plus 1, well these two angles form a linear pair, so I know that the sum of those two angles must be 180. So let me set that up. This angle is 59. 59 plus 3y plus 1 equals 180. And now I've got an equation. I've got one variable, so I can solve for this. Collect like terms here. 3y plus 60 equals 180. Subtract 60 from both sides. That gives me 3y equals 120. And if I divide both sides by 3, then I get y equals 40. Now, example number 6. Here I've got, again, a figure that looks kind of odd. It looks like just a quadrilateral, just some kind of four-sided figure. But I notice that these, each pair of opposite sides are parallel. So I've got a set of parallel lines here a set of parallel lines here. Now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to use a problem, another problem solving tip, problem solving tip number four. And problem solving tip number four is kind of a variation on redraw the picture and in fact instead of actually redrawing that picture what I'm going to do is I'm just going to extend the lines. So if I just extend out these lines here, these parallel lines, in fact, let me start with just this part over here. In fact, let me cover up this part here that I don't need. And notice, here I've got two parallel lines cut by a transversal, and I notice that these two angles here are same side interior angles. And I know that if two parallel lines are cut by a transversal, same side interior angles are supplementary. So I can say x plus 78 equals 180, subtract 78 from each side, and I get x equals 102. So now I have that x equals 102 degrees. So let's see. How about, let me go ahead and extend some more of these lines here. And how about now, let me cover up this part of the picture. Well, once again, I have two parallel lines here cut by this transversal. And once again, I have same side interior angles, which means that those two angles must again be supplementary. So Z must also be equal to 102 degrees. Well, let's do the same thing again here. Let me cover up this part of the picture. I've got my lines extended here. So now I can see I've got two parallel lines here cut by this transversal, and once again I have a pair of 
same side interior angles, which means those two angles must be supplementary. So if z is equal to 102, then y must be equal to 78. And now I have my value for x, my value for y, and my value for z. Okay, example number seven. So here again I have a figure, it's a four-sided figure, and I've got a diagonal drawn in here. And this looks a little different from the pictures that we've had so far as well. So what I want to do is I'm going to redraw this, and in fact I'm only going to redraw a part of it so that I don't have to get confused by all this stuff going on. How about if I just redraw this set of parallel lines and this diagonal line and I'll extend those as well. Now when I draw it like this notice that this angle here and this angle here that's the same as this angle and this angle in my original picture. All right. So this angle here, that's my 30 degree angle, that's right here. This angle here, that's this angle marked 2x. Well now in this picture, it's much easier to see that I have two parallel lines cut by a transversal and these two angles are alternate interior angles. Well I know from my alternate interior angle postulate that if two parallel lines are cut by a transversal, alternate interior angles are congruent. So 2x equals 30 and therefore x equals 15. So now I know the value for x and let's see once I know my value for x let me go ahead and plug that in here so I know this angle is 30 degrees. Now there are different ways of going about solving for the value of y. Here's one way I noticed that just like I redrew these two lines here with this transversal, let me also draw, redraw these two parallel lines, this top one and this bottom one. Let me draw those two parallel lines and again draw the transversal in. So this is my second pair of parallel lines, the top one and the bottom one. And here's my transversal. Now notice that I have this angle and this angle in my picture now. This angle is right here and this angle is right here. Well, this is my 44 degree angle. Now this angle here doesn't have any value at all in it, but since these are alternate interior angles, I know that it must be 44 degrees. Well, now that I know that this angle is 44 degrees, let me also redraw just this piece where I have a triangle and this triangle that angle is 44 degrees that angle is 30 degrees this is the angle I'm looking for and one of the things I know about triangles is that the sum of any three, the sum of the three interior angles of any triangle must be equal to 180 degrees. That, by the way, is a theorem that we're going to look at in a little more detail later. But for now, I can say 44 plus 30 plus y equals 180. Now I can solve this equation. Collect like terms. 74 plus y equals 180. Subtract 74 from both sides, and I get y equals 106. Now, examples number 8 and 9, I'm going to leave for you to do, but as you're, going, as you're working through those examples, I want you to look back at your problem-solving tips 1, 2, 3, and 4, and see if they don't help you in solving those last two examples.